Hi everyone! In this quick and creepy tutorial, we're going to build a full swamp scene in Unreal Engine 5. And yes, it's for beginners and can be done in 15 minutes. In this tutorial, we're going to sculpt a swampy terrain, paint swampy textures, add fog, water, plants, and we're also going to set up, set up a cinematic fly through. And I've also added all of the assets in the description so you can follow along. So we're going to start from complete scratch. Um, I have other videos going over the complete basics like the actual interface and how to install Unreal Engine from the Epic Games uh, Marketplace. So in this project, you're going to be able to follow along to this project specific tutorial, which I found really helpful as a beginner when I was first starting to learn. So let's start by opening Unreal Engine and creating a completely blank project with starter content. So there's a lot of ways we can get our starter content. Um, you can either check um, your starter content on when you make a new project, or you can add it from your content drawer here with this add button. And you can press add feature or content pack, and you can choose between any of these templates. So I'm going to stick with the third person and then I'm going to press add to project. And once those are in here, you'll be able to see them in your content drawer inside of content and third person. So depending on which one you choose, you'll see the folder pop up. So I cho chose third person and then we can go inside of the third person maps folder and open up the level. So I put a link into the description where I found my swamp assets. You can also get them from Unreal Engine directly. So there's a fab button right here where you'll be able to see all the assets you own. So if you press this button, my library, you'll be able to see your assets. So you'll see this mossy swamp ground that I used from Quixel. And you can always just press add to project directly from fab, which is super helpful to have inside of Unreal Engine now. Alrighty, so next we're actually going to delete our whole playground that comes with the third person template. So you can just click. So you can just um, delete all these assets from our outliner here that um, have the SM in front of them. So you can click, hold down shift, select, delete. There you go, our playground is deleted. You can also use the search bar to your advantage. So you can search here SSM and then it will um, show you all of the assets that have SN in them. And if you press enter, it'll select all of them. So I'm just going to delete those for now. And don't worry, we're going to add back in our player start. And I'm also going to delete this text. Cool. So now let's go to landscape mode and we're just going to leave this as is with the general settings so you can change these settings but keep in mind some of these settings might be um, more performant so keep that in mind you can also import a terrain from a file but that one is a little bit more advanced so you can also fill the world, but yeah, it's a little bit um, more performant. All right, awesome. So let's just create a simple terrain. You can gather reference to inspire you for your terrains, or you can use outside applications to make um, real world um, terrains, or we can use our awesome sculpting tools. So we have this normal sculpt brush, which lifts up the terrain. You can change the strength, so if you want it just to be very soft and subtle, you can change this to 0 0.2 and you'll see. So I want my swamp to actually be inspired by Florida, so I'm going to have a very um, flat swamp terrain. So you're free to play around with these as much as you'd like. You can also invert sculpt. So if you sculpt by um, holding down shift, 
it will push down your sculpt that you pressed, that you created. So for my Florida swamp terrain, I'm going to keep in mind where I'm going to add my swamp water. So I know that I want to make this pushed down. So like I mentioned, if I press shift, it will make a hole in my ground so that I can make my swamp um, indentation. So once you're happy with your terrain, we're going to actually go back to selection mode. And we're going to select our terrain. So you'll see we get a lot of these streaming proxies that come up when we create a terrain, but we want to select the main one. And then after that, we're going to find the landscape material option. There's many ways to do this. So one advantage you can do in Unreal Engine to quickly find materials in your content drawer is you can go to any folder and you can start filtering out um, your assets. So I already have my material and material instance filters. So you can just click those little check marks. And once you already have your own filters from before, you'll start seeing them here. So I'm going to look through my materials. I know I have this M ground. And I think I'm going to stick with this one because it looks nice and mossy. But I am going to select this and check out how my tiling looks. So, so I'm leaving mine at 0 0.05 for the tiling because that feels like a more realistic um, tiling with our landscape size. So it's time to start bringing in our green. I'm going to start adding some foliage for our trees and our grass to start set dressing this scene a little more. So back in our selection mode, let's change our mode to foliage mode. So now we're gonna go back to our content drawer again. And this time, instead of filtering out materials, we're gonna filter out static mesh. And I wanna look for meshes that we can use for our foliage. So for now, I wanna start with the big chunks, I like to think of my environments like um, a pizza. So I wanna start with the bigger base and then I go back down to the smaller details. So I'm just gonna grab some trees. So once you have your trees that you want to paint across your landscape selected, you can click and drag this into the drop foliage here option. So once you start dropping, dropping those in, you'll have to create a new static mesh foliage type. So I already have these. So if you don't have those, you can just drop them in and make your names. So if you already have some foliage, you can start seeing them in here and bring them back in. So I'm going to start clicking some trees. So once you have your foliage selected and added in here, you can check them and choose which ones you want to start painting. So I want to start with the trees and then you can change your brush size, your paint density. So right now my brush is huge, just going to make it a little bit smaller. And you'll see it's starting to scatter some trees around. So I'm going to pause on adding foliage for now and I'm going to continue with adding the water. So I'm going to go back to selection mode and I'm actually going to make my water using a plane. So if you go here to place actors, I went here to the shapes menu and then I just click and dragged a plane in my scene. And then I'm going to scale this plane. So I'm going to use the hotkey R to scale. You can also use this option to scale. So you can also scale by going to the details panel and selecting general. And I'm going to scale uniformly. So I'm going to keep this lock icon on. And I changed my scale to 11,000. So now you'll see our 
lake area is filled with a plane and all that's missing is adding a material. So we have a lot of swamp materials from our swamp assets. So now again, we're gonna use our trick to filter our, our materials. So I chose this material because it felt very murky and swampy to me. And you can see it here. If I press this button, it will go to it in the content drawer. So here it is. So I like to use a blueprint called Ultra Dynamic Sky. It's very versatile because it's very quick at making um, really realistic lighting. So once you grab that asset, all you have to do is go to the blueprints and drag it into your scene. So it's awesome because you can change the time of day. Like there is pretty cool. Once you're happy with your fog and your lighting, we can start on our last step, which is making our cinematic. So if you go here to cinematic in your place actors window, you can add a Cine camera actor. Just click and drag into your scene. Then we can change our view from perspective and change it to our new Cine camera actor. And we can start piloting our camera. So we can scroll out and find a nice spot for our cinematic that we want to create. I also have my setting as the cinematic viewport and I have my scalability as cinematic. So this is a bit heavy, but it's perfect for um, our cinematics and renders. So now we want to be able to see it without all these gizmos in the way. So we want to click these three lines here and turn on game view. And this helps us see what our scene looks like in game and also for our render. So now let's go to the content browser and we're gonna right click, go to cinematics and select a level sequence. So once you have that created, give it a name, then double click. So once you have your sequencer open, we can go to our outliner and click and drag our camera. In. I'm going to set a keyframe on this first frame using this button and I'm going to move my camera closer to the end of my swamp here. And I'm going to set a keyframe there on the transform. So let's play this. And there we go. We have a full swamp environment with foliage, materials, textures, fog, and cinematics, and you did it all as a beginner. Feel free to add some moss, more alligators, and bugs to make it feel even more swampy. And feel free to also send me a build of what you created.